Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Pleasure, and today we are talking about the 2022 Age of Sigma Battle Forces. And we are doing a little roundup talking about all the different boxes. After I've reviewed them, we are going to kind of summarize everything and bring the Age of Sigma kind of Battle Force cycle for 2022 to a close. If you enjoy the content, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing, as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to follow me over on Twitter or if you want to join our Discord server for further updates. So this video is meant to be a quick summary over all the boxes I've reviewed, all my findings that I've discovered while reviewing these boxes and so on. So if you're interested in just having a quick glance over everything, this is the video for you. But if you're interested in any one of these particular boxes and want an in-depth review, please consider checking out the playlist. Um, you can find it either in the pinned comment or on the channel. And there you can find all the different in-depth reviews so you can get a better idea of what you're going to buy this next coming weekend because there's a lot of options. You have seven boxes alone for Age of Sigmar, another eight for Warma 40,000. So yeah. So the first box I wanted to talk about is the Cruel Boy Swamp Lurkers one. It is one for the Oruk War Clans, but it's more specifically one for the Cruel Boys. And I gave this box a 3 out of 10. I've praised it for its great upgrade path, and that is basically its only merit. And this is the box you want to get if you have the Dominion half for the Cruel Boys and want to upgrade it, or if you already have an existing army, but maybe you're missing the Vulture, or maybe you're missing some of the bigger models in this box and want to add on to them. If you already have a massive army with a lot of gut rippers or a lot of uh, Mansky or Bolt Boys, you are not going to buy this box. It has no value for you. Um, if you are just starting out with the army, I really recommend you go buy the Dominion box first and then later upgrade because I think that this box is going to stay on shelves for quite a while because it is just not a great starting force. It doesn't play well out of the box. And it has other weaknesses as well, like the savings, which are not that great and so on. So this is a box that has one single purpose. It is meant to be an upgrade for either the starter set halves for the Cruel Boys or for the Dominion half of the Cruel Boys. And that is what it's excellent at. For anything else, like a standalone army, like a starter for this army, it is not that great. Next up, we are talking about the Stampeding Squiggle Edge. And the most important thing to understand here is that the jump we've made from the previous Battle Force, which was a 3 out of 10, at least in my opinion, and this one now, which is a 6 out of 10, is quite drastic. So the jump here is from way below average to slightly above average. And this box has a coherent theme, which is its strongest point. Having all squigs is great because this makes it either very interesting for existing Gloom Spike Kids players to maybe have all of the other different stuff but not too many squigs or it's super uninteresting because you already have everything you need for new players this adds a coherent theme you can buy this box twice if you wanted to because all the different options you have in here are not particularly named so you, they have uses multiple times uh, having four mangler squigs um, as i said in the review as well is a little bit much but you could definitely make use of it it's a fun unit and We've had recently uh, the pleasure to see that the Gloom Spike kids are getting a new Battle Tome. And this one is going to release fairly soon-ish, at least according to my predictions. I assume that it's going to release somewhere around February or March. And if that happens, hey, these units could all be very, very good. Now, the, the downsides I've listed were that the savings and the points we're only average or below average. You're not getting a ton of points. The savings are looking okay at 32-ish percent. Um, but yeah, the coherent theme really make this box what it is. And yeah, I can wholeheartedly recommend this one, no matter if you are a veteran with not that many squeaks for Gloom Spike Kids, or if you're a new player wanting to start the army. All you need to understand is that you are not going to play a 1000 points game with this one out of the box. Next, we are going to talk about the K Knight Slaughter Coven for the Daughters of Cain. This is another 6 out of 10. And my biggest problems with this one were the Doomfire Warlocks, which are just not that exciting right now, be it rules wise, or the models themselves, which are a little bit older. The bad savings, uh, I think it is on, on the very bottom out of all the battle forces I've reviewed so far, with only around 27 to 28%, which is really not that great. And the play playability out of the box is also not that good but the cauldron of blood really makes this box worth it the old star collecting 
was really really good and this box made me appreciate it a lot more so if you can find the daughters of Cain start collecting somewhere for msrp or close to it it is definitely worth the money simply because of that one model but yeah the points are above average it has a great upgrade path in that you can pick up the vanguard box you can pick up a melissa iron scale you can pick up this battle force twice and Morati, and you are going to be fine no matter what. You are going to have all of the different important core units, and you'll be fine. Uh, as I said, no matter what, it's good. And other than that, yeah, the Cauldron of Blood kit really carries this one. All of the other units are great because they offer a lot of variability. Obviously, if you want to play competitively, this is not the box for you. You want a lot more uh, Bloodstalkers in your box, and this one only offers you five of them. Uh, so yeah, but if you're playing casually, if you're just starting the army, this one is definitely worth it. If you're a veteran and you already have two cauldrons of blood, I would skip this one. If you have only one, it depends on if you magnetized your first one and what you did with it and its models. But having two of them, definitely not a bad idea. Next is the Revenant Wargrove for the Zilvaneth. I gave this one a 7 out of 10 simply because there are drives in this box and the alternative is very, very strong in that you could pay a little bit more and pick up two vanguard boxes and get stronger units overall but the alternative here is that you're saving a lot of money the savings here for this box are the highest out of any i've reviewed be it uh, 40k or age of sigmar at least so far with 38 percent on average that is a lot so yeah this makes this box definitely worth it on its own uh, you can as i said in a kind of lengthy review you can use the models you have in the box and convert some of the drives into slightly more useful models and yeah this box also has an easy upgrade path and that you can pick up this battle force and then pick up a vanguard box picking this battle force up twice is not really worth it in my opinion um simply because you have a named character in there you can um kit bash it to something else but eh, it's it's really not recommendable to buy this one twice and yeah, it is easy to build and paint really quickly, uh, simply because the entire army and the Zilvernet are very forgiving when it comes to that. And yeah, the savings really make this one a 7 out of 10. It is playable out of the box. You can do a lot with it. You have three battle line in there if you wanted to. You have a lot of behemoths in there. You have a lot of leader choices. This box has it all. But the clear downside is that the alternative is very, very strong as well. And yeah, the Dryads make this box a little bit awkward. Next, we are talking about the Verminous Host for the Skaven. And this box surprised me because when I first looked at it, it looked a little bit wonky simply because the models in this box are honestly quite old. And not all of them, but most of your battle line and most of your infantry is quite old. And that is the biggest downside of this box, to be completely honest, because everything else looks great. The Screaming Bell... It's also slightly a downside, not if you're completely new to the factory or anything, but if you've been collecting them for a little while or if you just started collecting them this year, you already have a lot of Screaming Bells, believe it or not. They are in every single kind of discount box or value box for the Skaven. So this model is a little bit annoying. And yeah, having 85 models, if you're completely new to the hobby, is an overwhelming thing, but that is obviously not really a downside. I've just listed it because I felt it necessary to point out that if you're new and you're buying this battle force, don't buy anything else because you're going to kind of overwork yourself or you're going to uh, look at all the piles of plastic and get demotivated. But other than that, this box is amazing. You're getting above average points. You're getting insane savings close to the Silverneth box at around 36%, some regions even 38%. It is playable out of the box. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. And it is technically worth it to be picked up multiple times if you're completely new to the faction. But if you are determined to start with 170 models, you better have a plan and an airbrush at that point. But yeah, this box, clear 8 out of 10, um, a super surprise. And if you don't mind the older models with the clan rats and the plague monks, you should be fine with this box. Next is the Legion of Grief for the Night Hunt, and this is another 8 out of 10, way above average, great box. Uh, it lacks cohesion, um, a lot of the units there don't quite synergize with each other, they don't quite support one sub-faction within the Night Hunt, but they are a kind of variety box of everything you could want down the line. 
Um, for veterans, this box is absolutely nothing. You have Lady Olinder in there. You have a black coach in there. If you already own those models, this box is virtually useless for you. And you're going to lose so much of the savings that it is just not worth it to consider it. And the playability out of the box is another slight weak point of the box because you really don't have that much bed line in there. And the units just don't synergize as well as I said previously. But the savings are above average. The points you're getting are above average. And the upgrade path is the most elegant one out of all of the battle forces. You're going to get this battle force, paint it up, do everything. Then get the Vanguard box, paint it up, build it, play with it, whatever. And then you're going to get the Ethereal Court and you're going to be at 2000 points or above. You can build um, really cool 2000 points list with that setup. And you're going to have everything you're going to need to build great lists and to have everything you'll ever need before kind of expanding your own way. But that is what I uh, kind of recommend. The Vanguard box and the Ethereal Court and you're going to be fine. And having the Black Coach discounted, which is a big model, admittedly, is also a upside for this box. So yeah, all in all, another 8 out of 10. I really like this box. And if I didn't have a massive pile of shame already, I would have strongly considered picking this one up. And last but not least is the Thunderstrike Spearhead for the Stormcast Eternals. And another 8 out of 10. We have above average points here. We have above average savings. Um, really good savings actually. We have a perfect upgrade for a starter set half like the uh, Harbinger set or the Extremist set or ideally a half of the Dominion set uh, because this one has no units except for the Annihilators that are in the Dominion half but you can build the Annihilators with uh, Meteoric Hammers and those are going to be different from the ones you get in a box if you wanted to. Uh, there are no Vindictors in this box, which is a clear upside because they have been discounted everywhere. So not seeing them in here is a clear win. And Storm Drake Guard discounted is another win because those are just great. The playability out of the box for this one is weird. This one has a little bit of the same problems like the Cool Boys box, but it's just better all around. This is what the Cool Boys box wanted to be and it executes on it a lot better because this one feels like it was kind of constructed or designed with the Dominion half in mind and upgrading it because GW knows very well that Dominion boxes are available everywhere still and for very, very cheap as well. So you can get Dominion boxes for around $100 or 100 euros or even cheaper um, if you wanted to. So there is that. And yeah, another thing that I really think that should have been added is a Nigerudicator. I've talked about it um, in length on the video. But if you want to check that out, uh, check the playlist. But all in all, this is another box I would have strongly considered if I didn't already have a lot of Vigilors. I have <laughs> two boxes of them and I really don't need 30 uh, bow Thunderstrike boys or girls. So there is that. But all in all, this box, another very, very strong box and a great upgrade if you have the Dominion box and want to expand from there. Now, when we look at the older boxes from last year, I'm very happy with the new ones we've gotten this year. We've got seven boxes. Most of them are very, very good. We had the Cruel Boys one. It is not bad. It just serves one singular purpose, and that is being an upgrade for the starter set or for the Dominion set. And all the other boxes are just amazing. Full disclosure, though, I'm not going to pick up any one of those because, as I said, my pile of shame is huge. And I'm just going to buy one single Battle Force this year and it's probably going to be for Warhammer 40,000. But if I had the kind of money to and the space and the time to pick another one up, I would have probably picked up the Nighthaunt one or the one for the Stormcast Eternals if I didn't already have a lot of Vigilors. So that is my view on things. If you are going to buy any one of those, uh, please let me know in the comments below. It would be interesting to know what you're going to buy, what you're planning to do for Age of Sigmar and yeah all other than that if you have any feedback anything else you want to add to discussion do all of that in the comments below thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video bye bye